Hello, this is Mike at Game From Scratch, and welcome back to our ongoing Game Dev 101 series. Today we are looking at height maps. Now, before I continue too much further, you may have noticed this video started with a little bit of an intro. Uh, I had some feedback that the lack of audio to start my video was causing people to think that their headsets, etc., were not working. Uh, so that was graciously created for me by a company called Zinc Logic Media. Uh, so if you can let me know if you like it and want videos to start with something like that, or if you prefer I didn't. Also, if you'd like to learn more about Zinc Logic, I've linked them down below in the comments, their YouTube page. You can see some of their work. All right, so without further ado, today what we're looking at is height maps. Now, a height map is a very, very simple concept. It's actually just a way of creating displacement in a mesh uh, using a grayscale image. And really, that's it. And if that was it, well, we'd probably be done right now, but they're actually really important to game development. For example, here we are in front of us. This is Unity, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new terrain object. If you ever worked with any uh, 3D game engine or landscape editor, this would probably be pretty familiar to you. You create your terrain object like so. So I've created a new terrain, and now you just kind of come in using uh, various different drawing uh, utensils, and you draw your, your terrain. You displace it like so. It will raise it up lower it down, etc. And what this essentially is, is a height map generation tool. So this is a lot of cool work on top of a very trivial concept called the height map. And if you actually look in here and go to the details, you'll actually see there's height map details down here. So you can see the resolution of the underlying image, uh, the base texture, etc. And you can actually import uh, a texture created from anywhere else to generate and make your height map. And height maps are pretty universal. A 3D engine that supports landscape supports height maps. It's just the way things work. And today what we're going to do is look at it in uh, Blender. So um, this is not a Blender tutorial. I'm not going to teach you how to use Blender. I'm just, just a great way of illustrating a height map in action. So first things first, we need some geometry for the height map to work on. The easiest thing to do is just come in here and go to Add Mesh, and we'll create a grid. And we're going to change that grid. So instead of uh, 10 by 10, it's 100 by 100. So come in here, Edit Mode, you'll see what I mean. So it's big 100 by 100 mesh. And we're just going to UV Unwrap. And we'll take the default unwrap for that. Uh, so next up, now that we have our actual mesh to work with, what we're going to have to do is create a height map uh, to actually draw on it. Now, as I said earlier, a height map is simply a grayscale image. Uh, so let's just use, we're going to use the built-in editor. You could use Photoshop, Paint.net, whatever you want. Uh, but in this case, I'll actually just use Blender's painting tool. And we're going to want to go in here, switch over to UV image editor. And we're creating a new image called height map. And here you see it's 1024 by 1024. Now, the important part here, though, is the color. And what I'm doing is I'm going to set the color here, the red, green, and blue values, to oops, 0 0.5. Now, this is uh, a value from 0 to 1 uh, for the red, the green, and the blue channel. And this is the equivalent of, if you've done any HTML development or whatever, this is the same as 127, 127, 127 on a 256 color scale, right in the middle of the spectrum. And what it does is it gives you a perfect gray. And that's important because gray is ultimately going to be um, the um, neutral color. So when we're talking displacement, uh, one color is going to be up, one color is going to be down, and gray is do absolutely nothing. Don't worry, that will make sense in a second. And it's come out of edit mode here. Uh, so over here, we'll save that as an image called height map. Okay, so we now have this texture we're going to work with. Uh, we have this image untextured. So there's our, our UV map um, coordinates over top of our underlying image, which is perfect. So the next thing we need to do is come in here and actually apply a modifier. So add modifier, and it's a displacement modifier. Uh, you'll see it jumped up automatically uh, because there's nothing attached to it yet. Now we want to go ahead and attach a texture to it. So create a new texture. We're going to switch over to UV coordinates like so. And we're going to sit here and we're going to go ahead and pick our newly created height map. All right. So you said just some, jump back to zero level right there. That's because it's a all gray image. So nothing magical happening yet. This this image is pretty boring. The height map is a completely empty height map. Uh, so, you know, not a lot of magic going on here. Let's go back to our displacement because we're going to have to toggle this. I don't know if there's a live way to do this. If you're a Blender expert, um, if there's a way to actually have it automatically update as the texture changes, I'd love to know it, but I don't think there is. Uh, okay, so we're back here, here is our empty gray image. We could go ahead and any paint editor we want. And here, I'll actually illustrate that. So I save this to my desktop. Come up here, and I will open it up with paint.net, like so. All right, so here is our image. We're going to go with, uh, let's make it slightly darker there. So dark, drawing, uh, make our brush a little bit bigger. So 
there. So we just drew some gray uh, or different color image on our underlying image and we'll just exit that out. We'll head back over to uh, Blender. I should actually have brought it in. Reload the image. All right, so there you can see our underlying update. Now let's watch what happens to the train that it's attached to. So we're gonna come over here. So we got a texture, UV coordinates it's using. We're just gonna kind of do a refresh. And there you can see the end result. So we look down here, it's like, ooh, hey, what's going on here? And what it's done is, based on the blackness of the value, it's lowered the detail. So you see here, the um, sharper value goes, you know, we now have a recession in our terrain. So this is how you would create basically um, valleys, as it were. And uh, we control the amount that this is applying using the strength modifier over here. So now what we're going to want to do is actually let's add some height back instead. So back over here in our image editor, instead of view mode, we will go into paint mode, bring up the tools, and what I want to do is paint in white instead. All right, so that should be white. Let's increase our strength up, increase our radius, and let's just go all the way around the outside edge. Like so. so now we have white a modifier in here as well. And now let's update with our newly created texture. And there you will see we now raised it up. And vice versa. So you can come in here as we kind of keep lowering things down. So this is all raised up. Update. So you see it, it raised above. And let's switch back to a darker color in the middle. And end result in. And it pushes it down. And that's it. That's really all that is involved in a height map. It's a, just a grayscale image, whereas black values are down, uh, white values are up, and gray values, exactly gray values, is no displacement at all. And if you use any terrain engine out there, like I said, we saw it with Unity, we could import this image, we could save it out, import it into Unity, and um, it will recreate this terrain. And we can bring it into various other game engines, we can bring it into Godot, uh, and it will just create this height map. So when you're looking and working with a landscape engine, a lot of times those landscape engines are really, as you're using, you know, these tools to draw up and down, etc. They're simply uh, creating this height map for you. Now, there's more to it than that. Obviously, you're going to have a texture layer here for doing, um, you know, um, plants and grass, etc. And if you're actually interested in it, I've got a three-part series on... Um, uh, creating train objects using uh, this technique in Blender. Uh, I'll link that down below as well. Uh, but that's all we're covering today. It's a very simple, powerful little tool. That's the height map. Um, it's the fundamental behind pretty much every single landscape engine out there. Now, there is one caveat you should be aware of. What happens if with this particular train using a height map system, I wanted to have a cave here? So I'm going to convert this. So I'm going to apply this. So right now, it's no longer using a height map. This is now a mesh. So you can see like so. So if I wanted to, for example, uh, punch these guys in right here. So let's, um, let's do a circle select like there. So I wanted to make a cave here. Like, all right, so enter. Like that. So if I want to do something like that using a height map, how does that work? Because the height map can only really, like, so the, the color value here, this color value here determined how high or low to draw an individual element. Same with this. Uh, so the white value said, okay, make this particular uh, corresponding value on the train. So here and here, there's the height being determined. The problem is with the height map, you cannot have non-overlapping values. It's a value uh, per dot. So in this case, we have the dots are underneath each other. So if you want to do something like implementing a cave, you have to create a system on top of height maps. Uh, so that is the one layer, one kind of gotcha of these um, systems. A height map is not good for doing multi-leveled uh, train. So basically, it will only store for every particular value uh, one up or down. So you can't have things on top of other things without, you know, creating something very specific to deal with that. So this kind of stuff, like a cave or a tunnel or something within your landscape or non-overlapping landscape, that's where a height map falls in its face and you need to use some kind of other technology to solve that. Uh, but you'll find the vast majority of um, the train engines out there uh, just don't give you the opportunity to create caves. Otherwise, there's some out there that do it, you know, using a voxel data set for, you know, that subset, etc. There are ways around this. Uh, just do be aware that if you want to, like, punch a hole or have multiple layers within a landscape terrain, a height map is not the way to go. It just doesn't work anymore. But for the vast majority of projects, the height map is the underlying way that landscape data is stored.
So uh, I hope you learned something today. I hope you found that cool. If you did, please, of course, do click like. And uh, we do this kind of stuff all the time. So if you like it, uh, please do hit subscribe. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Cheers. See you later.